Hi, this is Hesh Hirschman, and I'd like to take a moment to thank everybody who's been involved in this wonderful project for uh, for Sarah Sorevke Bas Mindel, and we hope that in this list of everybody's learning, we're able to accomplish for her that the Rabbani Shalom should grant her Rafiya Shalema, Rafiya Sanefesh, Rafiya Sagif. I've I've been asked, and I'm humbled to have been asked, to prepare one of the uh, perukim in, in Tehillim. I have Perek Yid Aleph. And this is an interesting Perek. It's the uh, second second day of the month. It's Yom Beis L'Chodesh. It's early in the career of Dovid HaMelech. At this point, he's having issues with and being chased around by Shaul, it's an unpleasant time. And the general principle for most people when faced with adversity is to to run and hide, to try to avoid the situation. And most people don't stand up or find a way to stand up firmly to adversity. So they run, they take flight, and they cower. And let's go through the the Perik, Pasuk by Pasuk, to explain the syntax and then discuss it a little bit. Lam Natseach Lidovid, to the Gesang Meister, to the conductor David, Bashem Chosisi, Eich Taimri Lenavshi, Nidi Halchem Tsipo. How could you? How could you say to me that you should take flight and head for the hills like a bird? Because here you have Rishuim who are preparing their bow. They're bringing the ends of the bow together so that they can fit the string and make it taut. They place the arrow onto the string. Liroyz b'moy oifel liyishchei leiv, and to shoot in the dark, to the yishchei leiv, to the upstanding person. We'll focus on this pasuk a little more later. Ki hashusais yehoresun, tzadik mapol. Well, the the very bases of things that you are grounded on, that you are believing in, that you had faith in, have been destroyed. Have been made to rubble. So Tzadik Mapo, what 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 have you done with your tzitkas? What have you accomplished with it? Hashem Bahaychal Kudshoy. The Banishlailam is sitting in his lofty place. Hashem Bashamayim Kisai. The Banishlailam has his seat in the Shemaim with a vantage point the likes of which we can't even fathom. Ein of Yechazi, his eyes see. Afapov Yivchanu b'nei Odom, and his brow tests or investigates people. Not that he browbeats them, but his brow, that inflection, that look, that penetrating study of the individual, is what the Rabban Shlaim does. Hashem Tzadik Yivchan, Rabban Shlaim tests the Tzadik. He does that. The Rusha, the Oyhev Chamos, son of Nafshai. And the Rusha, the, the person who is openly, patently evil. And the Oyhev Chamos, which is a, a more pernicious type of, of situation, son of Nafshai. He can't stand them. He can't stomach them, and he really has no will to countenance that. The Oyhev Hamas is an interesting situation because there are some people who, though outwardly, do not behave like Rishuim. They don't engage in obvious Rishas. But they enjoy, they enjoy watching people be subject to Rishas. They suborn it. They propagate it. They instigate it. And those are the people that are the Oyhev Hamas. 
And that is what the Rabban Yishloilam hates. Yamter al Rishoim Pachim. On these Rishoim, the Rabban Yishloilam will heap coals, presumably hot ones and burning ones. Aish Vigofres, fire and brimstone, as we've heard so many times. Really more like burning phosphorus. Veriach Zalofais Manas Kaisam. And hot burning winds will be ultimately what they will inherit, cups of it. Kitzadik Hashem, Rabbanish Loilam, is the embodiment of Tzidkis. Not that he's a Tzadik, but he's the embodiment of it. Tzedukos Oyev, he loves Tzedukos. Yosha Yechazi Ponema, and to the person who's a Yosha, and people who engage in Yosha, he will aim and look with his with his gaze. Now let's take a moment and go back to Pusik Bays. Kihine Horashoyim Yidrich and Keshes, they get their bow ready, Kainan Echitsam al Yesa, they post their uh, their arrow on the string. Leroy's been my oifel Yishailev. And this is precisely the behavior of not so as much the Rusha, but the Oyev Chama, someone who shoots at the Yishrei Lev from the dark, from places where they think they won't be detected. They engage in all manners of, of uh, subterfuge to pretend or to give the impression that they're not involved in anything, when really they are deeply involved in hurting the individual, whether it's physically or whether it's with words or whether it's with the agency of, a, of, an, of an intermediate, this is, this is what they do. They're not there to confront an individual and say, I can't stand you, I don't like you. They're incapable of telling someone, I think what you're doing is wrong. They don't have the ability to evaluate what it is that they're doing to someone else. They just do it because they enjoy this type of of, of evil behavior. And therefore they shoot in the dark at the Yishchei Lev. They shoot from a darkened place and they assume that the other person can't detect them and often they can't. But what they don't know or appreciate is what we see later. And that is that the Rabban Yishlanam sees. But why do they do this? They do this because as we see in Pusa Gimel they want to leave the impression on, on the tzaddik, on the person who's engaged in Yoshe, that hashosas hashosas that their bases are destroyed. The mind games continue. They, they want to make the person feel vulnerable, degraded. They have, they have no, no bases to stand on. They have no firmament that will allow them to protect themselves. And they want the tzaddik to feel helpless and say to himself, Ma Paul, what, is, what have I accomplished with, with tzitkis and proceeding in that form? And the truth is, Hashem Bahech al Kodshai, the Rabbani Shlalem is up in the Shemayim, Ein of Yechazi, his eyes see, Af Apov Yivchan Abneodam, he investigates and through his methods interrogates the individuals that need to be interrogated and understands what their motives are and why they're doing what they're doing. And at the end we see that the Rabbani Shleilam really has no use for the Rusha, the Ayahev Chamas, or their, their, their behavior itself. And the question then is, well, so what do we need all this for? Truth is that if the tzaddikim really were tzaddikim and we were all tzaddikim and generally did the right thing at every turn, then the Rabban Shloilam would really not have much use for Rishas, would not have much use for Rishuim, would not have much use for Oyhave Chamos. Have no use for it because you'll make the right decision at every turn. But sadly, we don't. We're frail. We have our frailties, and they're exposed on many occasions. And we do make wrong decisions, maybe because we choose not 
to see the right, or maybe because we're uneducated, maybe because we have a streak of vicious that somehow has found its way and woven its way into our fabric and our life. But in order for the Rabbani Shlilam to test someone to see if they really are someone who's just made a bad decision but really are tzaddikim, well, he's not going to send another tzaddik to do him wrong. He's going to send a Rusha to do him wrong and see if he'll withstand see if his amina will remain what it is. We can't always predict why, and it's really difficult for us in our circumstance to understand why these things happen. Uh, but Rishas is sent to confront Sadiqim. And it could take many forms. It could take the form of uh, a loved one or friend who's, who's ill take the form of oppression of many sorts. It could be all types of, of unfortunate circumstances and tests that people would rather not face. Some may be minor in the big scheme of things. Some, some may be unexampled in, in modern or even ancient history. But nonetheless, we have to face them. And the Boi Nishleilam confronts us with, with the Rishas and that rishas has to exist only for the purpose of testing the tzaddikim to the point where Rabbi Shlilam is convinced that they've overcome and have set their, their ways to follow true tzidkis. And in the end, it says, Hashem tzaddik, it's because ki tzaddik Hashem, Rabbi Shlilam is the embodiment of tzidkis. Tzaddikos oyhev, he, he loves Sidkis. He loves to see Yosha. And he prefers to see Yosha. And in fact, the capital ends, Yosha Yechazi Ponemai. And he faces those who are engaged in Yosha. And we'd like to make sure that we do our best to represent that. Hopefully, with our learning, that uh, we'll be able to be mashpia the rabbi nishleilam to help someone like Sura Rifke Bas Mendel, whose embodiment is uh, Sitkis, who showed love of Avas Yisrael and, and really the execution of all things that needed to be done well and good. The Rabbani Shalim should send her a Rafiya Shalema, Biku Oiv Rafiya Sanefesh, Rafiya Sagif, that she should return to all her koichas, Lairach Yomim Vishanim. And I'd like to thank uh, Rifki Lam, Tina Lam, and Chaya Lam for organizing this most gargantuan effort. And we hope and pray that we should be able to enjoy with Sarifke Bas Mindel Bikurev. Thank you.